maybe you know them better as ravioli, or pierogies, mandu, or gyoza, the dumpling. They might be steamed or boiled, pan fried or deep fried. However you cook them, they're delicious. On this Feed Me TV, we'll stop by a Belmore restaurant that offers traditional momo. Look how pretty that crescent moon. Check out Riverhead's Polish town to boil up some pierogies. Here we are, all these pierogies, so labor intensive, who knew? And make two varieties of Afghani dumplings at a Hicksville mainstay called Chupan Grill. See, you made it. Uh, kind of. We're exploring one of the world's most beloved comfort foods, the mighty yet humble dumpling. Stick around. bundle of joy is the dumpling. The definition of a dumpling is loose, but today we'll define them as a dough wrapped around a filling, then cooked in a myriad of ways. On Long Island, you can enjoy so many varieties of these perfectly portioned edibles, all while exploring the different cultures from where they originate. Our first stop takes us to Center Reach to experience a Chinese dumpling. In China, dumplings signify good fortune. Eat more dumplings and more money is sure to come your way. Soup dumplings, or Xiaolongbao, are the current global superstars of the dumpling world. They're made with flavored aspic, or gelatin, and when they're steamed, the heat renders the aspic into a scrumptious soup. At Yum Yum Dumplings, daughter Fiona expedites the orders while her mother, Helen, makes those soup dumplings and so much more. They opened the restaurant in 2017 and offer a whopping 16 kinds of dumplings, from the traditional pork and scallion to buffalo chicken. This we gotta see. Making the wrapper the right thickness is an important part of Xiaolongbao. If they're too thin, the dumpling will split and the hot liquid will spill out. If they're too thick, you consume too much dough, and that's just not tasty. That technique is clearly another dimension. She, she said the, the skin, the thinner the skin is, the better it is for right. you to enjoy. Let's see if I can do this. The pork flavored gelatin is added to our ingredients. Now let's shape our soup dumplings. Now we put our dumplings into the steamer. They steam for five minutes. Then I watched Mother Helen make their signature dumpling, the jiao de. These are classic Chinese dumplings and they're really popular during the Chinese New Year. The mixture is a fragrant combination of pork, scallions, sesame oil, ginger, and soy sauce. Just before serving, they're pan-fried to add more texture. Thanks to my mother-daughter chefs in the kitchen, I've got an incredible dumpling feast. I've got my bao buns, I have soup dumplings here. These are my pork and scallion dumplings, shumai, and a mixture of teriyaki chicken, buffalo chicken, and chicken bacon ranch. But I'm going to try this special giant xiaolong bao that they made just for me. I think if you order ahead of time, you could have it. But let's see if I can stab into this and have a sip. Mmm, that broth is delicious. And I'm gonna finish the rest of this. Yum yum for sure. It's a dumpling universe on this Feed Me TV. I'm insecure about my momos. Stay tuned for more. The men love to make these? No, oh, to eat it. it. 
let's head east to Riverhead's Polish town. Homemade pierogies are on our menu. Pulaski Street Grill opened in the heart of Polish Town in 2016 by husband-wife duo Tom and Leslie Drake. Tom has been in the restaurant business for over five decades. That love for cooking passed on to his son, Brian, who oversees the kitchen at Pulaski. Tom prides himself on authentic Polish recipes that came from some unexpected sources. My accountant, who I've had for a long time, her mother. She's Polish. Polish, mm -hmm. and she gave me some hints as far as certain things to do, tweak certain uh -huh. recipes, and it's worked for me. Rolling pin! A rolling pin. We began making our Polish delights with a simple pasta dough. Oh, wow. It's a pretty, yeah, it's a tough dough. Each wrapper gets abundantly filled with a mixture of potatoes, cheese, onions, and butter. Polish food definitely embraces butter. Yeah. The thing of a true dumpling is when you put them in boiling water, they go dump. After a short boil, we brown the pierogies in butter. Let's put it on a plate. Look at those nice pierogies. We got a kielbasa, the sauerkraut, potato pancakes, our pierogies with the caramelized onions. Cheers. Delicious little morsel. Hardy Polish fair doesn't get much better. For a taste of the mountains, let's go to Everest Himalayan Cuisine in Belmore. Nepal and India share many culinary attributes, but the momo is native to Nepal. So the food that you're serving here is what? Because it doesn't say Nepalese or Tibetan, it's Himalayan. What does that mean? We use a lot of, you know, the Himalayan seeds, herbs and spices. In Nepal, they love to eat spicy. Even the kids there, you know, they eat spicy food. Mm -hmm. The momo isn't a spicy dish. Momo is one of the favorite dishes of all Nepalese people. We'll start with the vegetables. Okay. We fill the wrappers with a paneer, carrot, and cauliflower mixture. The first time customers, you know, they are, uh, they are feared about the spices that we use. We have a spicy level here from zero to 10. Oh, and there are customers, that's a big range. <laughs> yes. Then we made the meat momo, the chicken flavor, which is one of their most popular varieties. The filling consists of minced chicken, onions, cilantro, ginger, and soy sauce. Now comes time for the steamer. A short 12 minutes is all that stands in the way of my Momo feast. Here's to the Nepalese Momo. For an Afghani dumpling affair, let's head to Hicksville to Chupan Grill. Chupan means shepherd in Dadi, the official language of Afghanistan. And at Chupan Grill, the food, like a shepherd, is humble. No unnecessary extravagance goes into these well-spiced Afghan dishes. Afghani food is truly one of my favorite cuisines. And when we're talking about dumplings, that means oshak and mantu. This is oshak, uh -huh. which is made of uh, leek and it's more vegetarian. Right. This is mantu, a steamed dumpling filled with chicken with a topping of yogurt, chicken sauce, and mint. And you're going to show me how to make these, right? Sure. I can't no wait. Problem. We started with the vegetable oshak. Yes. Which one is more popular, the oshak or the mantu? To be very honest, it is equal. Now, in Afghanistan, is it typically like sort of, you know, like an appetizer kind no, of thing? No, no, it's or, a oh, meal. It's, it's a, a meal. meal. On our weddings and parties, big parties, this is something essential. A lot of people love it, especially men. They love to, the men love to make this? No, oh, to, to eat, eat it. it, not to make it, my friend. <laughs> they never be... like to make anything. You know Mina showed me her special rose-shaped dumpling technique. You can imagine the, the rose that's sort of wanting to happen. All right, so we made the oshak. Now we're gonna make the mantu, which is the meat version. We have to with this, few Ooh, of them. A few. Yeah. The mantu filling consists of cooked chicken, onions, cumin, and other spices. Let's do my corner to corner. Side Spice to side. See, you made it. Uh, kind of. I'm just no going to stay here and live here and make all your oshak and mantu. I oh, can be okay. your, your mentee. No Thank problem. You. Thank <laughs> you. Three kisses in Afghanistan. I know. For an Italian version of a dumpling, let's head to our last stop on our dumpling tour to Piccolo's in Mineola, located on East Jericho Turnpike. My father was a chef in Manhattan. My grandparents had an inn in Italy. They made ravioli also. My father showed me and we continued the legacy of ravioli, I guess. 
and served over 13 kinds of ravioli. These are Italian dumplings that even your nonna would approve of. There are so many other types of dumplings you can have on Long Island, like the Turkish menti at Ephesus Mediterranean in Massapequa Park, topped with garlic-infused yogurt, paprika butter, pine nuts, and dried mint. Or the traditional Jewish dumpling known as a krepla, found at Zan's Kosher Deli in Lake Grove. And don't forget the gyoza, a pork and cabbage dumpling that's like a pot sticker, found in many Japanese restaurants like Koiso and Carl Place. Go ahead, have a dumpling. Chances are you can't eat just one. And with so many places to enjoy them on Long Island, you won't have to.